The coffee in your cup has its origin in places with names and histories and is grown, nurtured, and harvested by people with names and histories. When we travel to coffee farms and to coffee growing communities, we have learned to pick up the subtleties that really distinguish those communities and those environments. When you walk through the farms, discover the culture of the communities, befriend the families, witness the skill and spirit that must be committed to plant, harvest, and process, you gain the deepest understanding about what it takes to produce quality coffee. Often the places that we find that are most well suited to grow coffee of exceptional quality are places that are remarkably remote, very difficult to access by roads, if roads even exist. What has evolved in those areas is a, a true culture and economy that is very much based on coffee. And we find generation after generation after generation of family members within one community that really have developed a lifestyle and a life around the coffee harvest and the cycles that are associated with that. What we know of as a coffee bean is actually the seed of the coffee fruit. To plant a seedling in the ground is only the beginning of a very long multi-year cycle. It will take anywhere from three to five years after the seedling is planted before it will produce its first harvest. If all goes well, about nine months after flowering, those seeds will mature and ripen, turn a beautiful crimson red or a bright, brilliant banana, orangey, yellow color, and the harvest is ready to commence. Individual coffee fruits ripen at different rates. Truly selective harvesting requires several passes over the same plant over a period of several weeks to ensure the selection of only ripe fruit. Often that work involves entire families and it's interesting to consider that in most places where coffee is grown school vacations are timed with the coffee harvest so at the peak of the harvest the entire family can contribute in the the work of bringing in those ripe coffee fruits after the coffee is harvested the farmer delivers the coffee to a receiving station where it is weighed these bags can weigh up to 150 pounds the farmer receives partial payment at this time, but full payment may not be received until months after the harvest. And as many farmers receive the majority of their income from coffee, this money must be budgeted through an entire year until the next harvest begins. The first act is to wash the cherry and depulp it. This really must be done within 24 hours after harvesting. This is done on almost a continuous batch process where the coffee is run through from tank, sinkers are moved off into one batch of depulpers. The next stage after depulping is to have the seed and the pulp go through a caged cylinder. This separates out the seed. The seed actually falls through the grate. Then you get this immediate separation of that that's immediately available to ferment and that that may need to be reprocessed or separated altogether. Most often the coffee skins and pulp are collected for composting with other organic matter. In the fermentation tank, the coffee undergoes an enzymatic process which breaks down the pulpy matter and the sugars that cling to the coffee seed. A trained expert can put their hand within the pile of fermented coffee and squeeze it between their fingers. If the coffee feels slick and slippery, then more fermentation has to occur. After the fermentation process, the coffee undergoes a series of washings to further remove any residual coffee fruit. After the washing process, the coffee seeds must be dried. In the patio method, a layer of coffee seeds is spread out upon a clean, flat surface. Throughout the course of the day, each of those coffee seeds has to be meticulously turned and raked to ensure uniform drying. After proper drying, either on a patio or in a mechanical dryer, the coffee is held in parchment or in reposo for a period of up to several weeks to ensure consistency and uniformity. After the reposo period, the outer protective layer of the coffee seed or the coffee parchment must be removed. After removal of the parchment, each coffee seed is sorted by both size and density. Sorting by hand ensures that any defective beans are eliminated before the coffee is bagged for export. The moment of truth occurs when a sample of green coffee is drawn from the warehouse and prepared as a roasted sample for evaluation by the quality control experts at the Beneficio. 
a sample of the same coffee is sent to the roaster to ensure that the coffee meets quality standards before it is exported to the United States. Once the coffee has been delivered to the roaster, it is cleaned once again and roasted by batch by a team of well-trained roaster craftspeople. And it is the roasting process that actually releases all of that sweetness, that depth of character that truly gets unleashed when the skill of the roast master and careful blending bring all of those lovely flavors to life. As consumers, we have tremendous power to impact the lives of those around us and to have a positive impact on our environment. And it's that power of choice to consider the choice of choosing a coffee that's grown organically or a fair trade coffee or a sustainably grown and traded coffee that can really empower the consumer and make us feel as though we truly can have an impact on the lives and the places where coffee is grown.